the dudes. Keys of the dudes. Oh, did I just throw you off? Jeez, I'm kind of like three, two, and all of a sudden someone's. It was either gonna be that or it was gonna be like a rocky. It's like the (laughs) baritone clicked in. (laughs) I keep you on your toes. Oh my god, sign up. And wow. I haven't even had any caffeine today. In fact, I am running out Could of five hours me. of sleep. <laughs> By the so, welcome, nice. welcome to Cues with the Buttes, if you hadn't heard. Yeah. <laughs> welcome to Cues with the Buttes. They've, already, have... they've already exited out of this video. <laughs> They're like, what the hell is this? This chick be crazy. <laughs> like, what in the hell? Um, no, thank you for all of you checking out our YouTube exclusive. Thank you to those that submitted questions for this week's Cues with the Buttes. Don't forget to go check out this week's podcast episode where some of these we actually dive into a little bit more in depth with our guest Mark Rosen but without further ado let's get to the cues wow okay so question one from Alicia F predictions for the state attorney I don't care oh ouch oh my god Madame is out I'm out Oh, F a Gentry Academy. Jesse's pouting. <laughs> hey, Gentry Academy beats uh beat my South St. Paul Packers too. So I we can can we agree on that? We don't like them, right? Move them up to double A. Get them yeah, out of no, A. Honestly, <laughs> uh, thank you. Honestly, that's move them up. Starting to that. A. That's that's what we have to say. Yeah. yeah, they beat my South St. Paul Packers uh, on the girls' side uh, um, in a pretty close matchup. That was a bit of a heartbreaker. So that was tough. I I mean I deal mostly with um uh, double a schools for my high school sports broadcasting job. So I'll kind of stick to, to that side of things. Uh, Lakeville okay. South looks like they could probably win it oh, all. Yeah? They're really good. Hill Murray. I wouldn't be surprised if they win a second consecutive championship. They uh, completely I, dominated white bear. I know it wasn't white bears year this year. Like last no. year was their year if they had any, but yeah, I mean, I, I was kind of surprised that Hill Murray came out as strong as they did in that section final against the bears. Yeah. And I, I don't like Hill Murray. Like I don't want them to, to succeed. Um, I'd rather have like Lakeville South win. Um, but yeah, Lakeville we South. We're losing just viewers like- left and right. We got Gentry Academy, <laughs> FM, Hill Murray, FM. <laughs> UND fans are against us now. Yeah. It's uh sorry. We, we probably, we dug ourselves a hole in this one, but uh, yeah, I think Lakeville South could do really well. Hill Murray could do well. Um, even like St. Thomas Academy, which is a coverage school for, for um, my TV station that I work for covering high school sports um, there um, they've had some good um, you know, good games this season. And we've seen them a handful of times. They've got Jackson Hallam, who's a, um, a draft pick of the Vegas golden Knights. He is a man amongst boys. Let me tell you that uh, when, when he plays, he stands out in a heartbeat. So handful of teams that I think could do well. Um, but yeah, between those three that I listed, I would rather have it not be Hill Mary, but, but somebody else. You just went with double A then, right? What about Maple Grove? That's kind of a, upset a little bit right I yeah mean, seven zero over centennial well and I really feel like this year more than ever like anything can happen we still could have COVID cases pop up and have teams be out of the turn like right like if there's that's still a possibility and just with how weird the season has been I feel I've felt this way with every league and every team and, and everything that I've watched this past year is like anything seems possible like I, I just because a team is playing really well or a team is playing really poorly I don't necessarily attribute that to to ultimate failure or success towards the end of the season so who knows what could happen as we're seeing with NCAA college hockey you know Nord, Notre Dame is out uh, now Michigan is having some issues same could go for high school sports so uh, we'll see I guess once it gets a little bit closer to um, some of those final games who's still out there um, but yeah there's there's a handful of teams who could really do some damage uh for minnesota here i'll go class a even though matamina is not in it got <laughs> routed seven to three i made a bet with dame Mizutani. go check out his oh, podcast God. episode by the way <laughs> just because he had to actually he was covering the wild game and he was covering the the bottom meat eye gentry academy game and we were okay. both like this isn't looking good it was very sad for me but um no I, i'm more familiar with some of those class a teams it's a lot of the same teams that you've been seeing year and year again you've got your hermantown in there you got east grand forks back in there you got delano back in there um i will anybody but gentry academy i will yeah. cheer for anybody even i will even cheer for hermantown despite wow. <laughs> i know That's, i know d- I actually I like East Grand Forks. I think I'm going to choose East Grand Forks. That's who I'm going to root for. That's going to be my team. East Grand Forks, let's go. Don't (laughs) let me down. I'm very spiteful if you let me down. We're so sorry, Gentry (laughs) Academy, for all the hate. I'm not sorry. (laughs) Not apologizing ever. Next question, Fred. Next question. (laughs) We need to move on quickly. Salt. (laughs) Jesse's going to go off on a tangent. (laughs) This next question is from our boy, Adam C. Who do you think is an X factor for the Whitecaps besides goaltender Amanda Levier? (laughs) 
Alexis, this is all you, girl. I always get to the floor when the white caps questions come up. Yeah, I just don't know. I, I always I feel terrible. I don't know enough that I would be yeah. educated. Yeah, no, I gotcha. I gotcha. I, I, I would have said Amanda, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, that is an obvious one because she is just such a big part of that team. Um, but beside her, I would say that um, I got a couple. Allie Thunstrom, another obvious answer, but when she's playing well, the white caps are really, really hard to stop. And unfortunately in the bubble, she didn't really have as good of a season as I think everyone expected. And coming off of a season where, you know, she had, you know, she was tied in the league for the most goals and she was just really, you know, she helped uh, the white caps beat the Boston pride for their only loss of the season last year. And then she came into the bubble and didn't have as good of a performance as I think a lot of people expected. Granted it was a, you know, condensed season and only so many games and, and the bubble kind of got dismantled um but if she's playing well they are hard to beat the other one that i would say is Haley mack who's a rookie uh um she's a you former, love Haley mack i feel like I you like brought her, her up a few times yeah i have so she's a former bemidji state beaver played well in the bubble she um scored the shootout winner in that huge come from behind win against the toronto six um early on in that season and i think that she could kind of be like a dark horse almost like you wouldn't necessarily expect her with all the talent that the white caps have to maybe stand out but i think think with how she played in the bubble if she can do a little bit more of that especially if someone like Allie Thunstrom maybe isn't on her a game for the next game or two um someone like Haley Mack could really stand out so I would say those two would be some big uh key pieces for the Minnesota Whitecaps I like it I won't disagree I will say <laughs> the one thing I did notice about um for the Whitecaps heading into this there's been some discrepancy on players that they can add, right? Yes. What's the situation there just for those to help better understand? Yeah. So basically like they, when it was in the bubble season, they, they basically had some people who could come into the bubble, but they had to like quarantine and they had to test negative and, but you could make these roster changes. Now, um, you know, they're kind of dealing with those same issues where it's like, okay, what are these rosters going to look like? Um, and I know this morning, uh, the league announced that there was zero positive COVID tests, um, heading into tonight's game games. Um, and then the Whitecaps were dealing with the fact that they will not have Sydney Baldwin um, playing for them defensively, which is a bummer because she is a big part of that team as well. Um, and I know there was a lot of comments coming out saying they are really going to miss her um, as they try to um, claim another Isabel Cup. So yeah, just because of COVID <laughs> and stuff, there is like some issues with that. Um, but I think the Whitecaps have a healthy enough roster and have a good enough roster to t still do some damage here in the semifinal and hopefully a final game as well. Good to note. Next question, Fred. Next question comes from B. Heinz. Heinz, there's like three Z's at the end. <laughs> Heinz. Wins are great, but Julie the Cat Gaffney goaltending and 11 shots on goal obviously aren't sustainable. What needs to change most for us to get back to playing complete games? And I feel like Jesse's just going to throw out a three word answer and be done with it. Shoot? What? Three word Shoot answer. The puck. Yeah. Shoot, oh. <laughs> shoot. oh, that is three words. Three, yes. shoot the puck. Shoot the, yeah. shoot the puck. The <laughs> um, no, shout out. I was going to first shout out to the Julie the Cat Gaffney reference. I'm digging that. Uh, Mighty Ducks reboot starts today, guys, just in case you forgot. I wonder if um, she looks decent compared to the rest of the team in that damn photo. Yeah. I mean, uh, I didn't age well either, so shut there we go. <laughs> um, no, I mean – that's just it. There needs to be more shots on net. I, I, not to just go back to that St. Louis game where there were only 11, but in general, again, they're going back to trying to be too fancy, trying to be too pretty. And you don't need that. I mean, especially in today's game, any team doesn't need that. Get the puck on net and somebody will be there to score the greasy goals. I mean, that's, that's how you win games too. It doesn't have to be this highlight reel. And I think they got maybe a little too, I don't want to say cocky, but maybe too much swagger a little bit like, Oh, we're putting up five more against comfortable. the Arizona yeah. Coyotes. Like, so Arizona Coyotes. Like, well, I, could I probably could too. Yeah, yeah, like shoot, put me and Jesse on a line, have Fred Center. It. We could probably score the Coyotes <laughs> without Darcy Kemper for sure can do that. Like yeah. no big deal, whatever. But um, yeah, that's my biggest thing would be just to shoot the puck again. We talk a little bit, a lot about about uh, scoring in this week's episode. Be sure to listen to that. Alexis, anything else that you want to add? Yeah, kind of just a to one step uh, uh, beyond that as well is getting bodies to the front of the net. I think a lot of the time because the Wild have gotten more comfortable with their speed and with being able to score off the rush and making some of these fancier plays that they didn't have the really the ability to do in seasons past. 
they stay to the outside a little bit more. They like the high cycle. They like the low cycle, but there's not a lot of times where there's, they're getting bodies to the, to the net, especially like on the power play, which I think is part of the reason the power play hasn't worked so well this season. Um, and the best way to get those dirty goals is to get bodies in front, whether it goes off of your player, your opponent's player bounces and the goalie can't see it and goes over his shoulder. Um, good things can happen and chaotic things can happen in a good way when you put bodies in front of the net. So I'd like to see the wild do a little bit more of that. They've got guys who can do it. Guys like Zach, Parisi, that's his whole game. Jordan Greenway, Jewel Erickson Eck are all very good at playing that kind of game. And now you've got guys like Kirill Kaprizov who can shoot and um, Kevin Fiala who's got a great shot. And Jared Spurgeon, for the love of God, is putting pucks in the back of the net. So get your body to the front of the net. Good things will happen. That's what I would say. I mean, just to add one more comment, like you said, Zach Parisi to me, that's that's all his game. So mm-hmm. you saw glimpses of him getting back. He's obviously on COVID protocol. Not sure when he's coming off of that. But um, yeah, he's one guy that you need him to turn that game mm-hmm. back on that is his game because that's that's where he shines and Jordan Greenlee Nick Bukestad another guy too right he's got that big body screen the hell out of those goalies and and help your your outside guys get some of those shots in so good question thank you B <laughs> thank you B <laughs> <laughs> next up Michael V I love college hockey so I'm excited to see the tournament start if you can't pick your favorite team who makes the frozen four for me, my favorite is North Dakota. So I will pick Mankato, Michigan, Wisconsin, Boston college. I like where this is going, I guess. Right. <laughs> so I can't pick Minnesota because can't Minnesota's Minnesota. my favorite team. Um, I will say Mankato. I will say Boston college was, I hate to just pick the ones that he just picked. Um, Wisconsin. Oh, Wisconsin, Cole Caulfield, baby. Cole no, Jesse. Caulfield. I'm sorry. No, we, we, we literally just last episode were like better dead than red. And now we're like, I, Cole, Wisconsin. <laughs> I'm not cheering. I'm just, I use my logical brain, Alexis. All right. Um, so yeah, Are you I would implying say, my brain is full of <laughs> illogic. Go eat yeah, a pickle. That's true. Um, I and I will. <laughs> Maybe I will. That's today. Modern, modern insult wow. against me. Go eat a pickle. Would you? And I will say, I mean, North Dakota's strong again this year. It's hard to say that they're yeah. not going to make it. So North Dakota, Mankato, BC, and uh, Wisconsin. Okay, uh, my answer is for sure not Wisconsin uh, and for sure not North Dakota. The, he, the guy who asked this question probably already isn't tuning in because we just roasted North Dakota into oblivion in the episode uh, of this week. So <laughs> so sorry if he isn't listening to this because he hates us now. But um, I would probably say Boston would probably be mine. And then if Boston, Boston or Boston College. Boston College, There's sorry. Very, Boston very College. big difference. Thank right. you. Yes, yes, Boston College um, would probably be mine. And then – Maybe the Beavers. I just, I have a hard time Aww. with Mankato because Mankato fans are obnoxious. Like they, <laughs> there's so many other good Dan teams Myers, that- <laughs> Ryan Carter. <laughs> yeah. Kidding, horn, horns down. Am I right? <laughs> um, yeah. Like I just, they're so obnoxious and there's so many other, like re- they always think they deserve better than what they're getting. And it's like, no, that you, there's so many other like good teams here. And like, you know, I just, I, have, I have a sour taste in my mouth over Mankato <laughs> fans. So Boston College sure. and the Beavers would probably be my two picks. All right. I think, Fred, do you have any insight? No, I don't have any insight, but I will say that currently <laughs> Bemidji is taking a 3-1 lead over Wisconsin while we're recording this. Just saying. Better dead Why wouldn't you dead. tell me that before I picked Wisconsin? Because I wanted you to have egg on your face. Fred's like, Wisconsin already lost, by the way. So <laughs> yeah, You're an Not idiot. Not lost, what I'm just saying. <laughs> Now I have to go eat a pickle and like <laughs> whatever. <laughs> Re-record. Cut this. We're starting over. I pick Bemidji to beat Wisconsin. <laughs> now we'll leave it for the integrity of the podcast. Yeah, we'll tell them we recorded this like a day before. He sounds integrity. like a genius. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah. Exactly. So that's gonna do it for this week's cues. Thank you to everybody that submitted. Again, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel for more exclusive content and uh, check out this week's episode with Mark Rosen for more great hockey insight from our minds and his. Have a great week, guys. We'll talk to you later.